What's up guys, Divinator1212 and it's list day. Ah, uh, yes, list day. And today we're gonna be looking at the top 10 best rares in Master Duels. Yeah, we're gonna polish off this series by looking at the best rares, because we looked at the worst supers, the worst ultras, and the best normals. So let's do the best rares. So that way you guys have a comprehensive list of all the crappy expensive cards and all the cheap good cards. That second half might actually be more useful. So without further ado, let's look at some good rares. Number 10 is number 75, Bamboozling Gossip Shadow. Oh no, nah, I've been bamboozled. Little did Dave know that the ridiculous thing he randomly said would come to pass. <laughs> yeah, so I recorded this a few weeks ago and lo and behold, the card got banned. So I guess I really was bamboozled. So if you guys really need to put something in that's uh, not a banned card, uh, I don't know, Floodgate Trapple. Confounding Gossip Shadow is a rank three XC monster. Wind Spellcaster with like barely any attack power and 2600 defense, it got a big booty. Although uh, that'll that, that'll that never happen. No, that, no one cares about that. No, what we actually care about Horn Swoggling Gossip Shadow is its effects. Its first effect, once per turn when your opponent's monster activates its effect, quick effect, Detach two material from this card, and that monster's effect becomes each player draws one card. This is kind of neat, I, I guess. Basically negates your opponent's monster effect by turning it into something they didn't intend it to do, so it's basically, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a negate. Sure, they're getting a free card, um, but if they really needed, like, that Barone to go off, this is kind of a cheesy way of dealing with that, I suppose. But nah, that's, we, we, we never use that effect. We care about that second effect. But using Gossip Shadow's second effect, you can target one other XC monster you control, take Shadow and all of his material, and just shove him under that XC monster. Why do we give a crap about that? Well, when we used to have Rongo Bongo, we could use this to pump up how many materials it has, and therefore uh, making it have more effects. The card itself is very, very good. It's just it's heavily reliant on another card also being very good. Something to use it on. But it is certainly a neat effect. Here we go. Number nine is Planet Pathfinder. Level four Earth Machine. Here's looking at you, Karen. I do hope his eyes gaze upon me and that my allegiance is recognized. Notice me, senpai. But again, I find nothing except for sweaty, devastated loneliness and a thousand judging eyes staring back at me from the cover of a stolen Victoria's Secret catalog. I didn't take your mail, Mrs. Pemberton. Stop asking me that. Leave me alone. 1,000 attack, 1,000 offense. What do? If you contribute this card, add one field spell from your deck to your hand. It. It finds your planets, I guess. Why do we care about this? Well, a ton of decks nowadays rely on their field spell to do something, whether it makes their monsters have effects, have some kind of protection, or in many cases, it's like the rota for the deck. So in order to make your deck more consistent, it is really cool that you can search the card that searches your cards. Granted, we have cards like Metaverse and Terraforming, but those are both at one. Uh, so it is kind of nice that we have another option. It's on a one for one normal summon, which isn't super good, but this is only a rare, so be nice. And certain decks don't really care about blowing their normal summon, so it's really not that big of a deal, depending on the deck. Also, it has advantageous typing, so I'm sure there's some cheese you can do with that as well. I was actually shocked to see this one's only a rare. Dimensional Fissure. Continuous spell card. Any monster sent to the graveyard is banished instead. It's just a floodgate. Floodgates on spells are pretty nifty. We don't get many of them. Most of them are continuous trap cards, meaning they are at least slightly vulnerable to your opponent, like doing things on your end phase and such. But the fact that uh, this is a spell is pretty slick. Not quite as good as Macrocosmos, because this only does monsters, but most of the time that's really all that matters anyway. Because Yu-Gi-Oh! is a heavily monster effect based card game. And because it is only monsters, this is a useful floodgate in decks that don't use a ton of monsters. Maybe only use spells, or only use traps, or it's like Flunderies or something and they don't care about being banished. Just there's tons of interesting options you can do, and this is a pretty solid little card, especially for a rare. I'm honestly shocked this isn't at least a super. It's really, really good value for a card that cripples quite a few decks. Oh yeah, baby, here we go. It's your boy, Torrential Tribute. Torrential Tribute! 
This classic normal trap card is only a rare in the Master Duels, but in certain decks it's an absolute blowout being that it can respond to your opponent's summons. When a monster is summoned, whether it is yours or your opponent's, destroy all monsters on the field. Somebody plays something, you blow everybody up. Basically a spell speed to dark hole that acts a hell of a lot like a whole trap card. <laughs> Neat how that worked. I hazard a guess that's a coincidence. If your opponent's monsters don't have any protection against destruction, or your monsters do, this can be a pretty neat little piece of interruption in the middle of your opponent's combo. Cause sure, their boss monster might be able to stop this, but all the little crap they use to make it, probably can't. Granted, it's a trap card, so it's a little slow, you're probably better off using something like Nibiru if that's what you're trying to do, but um, if you're a poor and or free to play player, they're the same thing. <laughs> And this really is certainly a very, very nice budget option. All right, number six is the big moth kaiju thing. Uh, good Gadarla. Oh, Gadarla, oh, Gadarla, you tributed my towers guy. You're a dick. Yeah, so basically all we give a crap about is the fact that this is a kaiju monster, therefore it means that we can tribute one of our opponent's monsters to inherently special summon this from our hand. Kaijus have proven themselves to be fantastic removal because it is a condition to send them to the graveyard as tribute, not an effect. So things that are unaffected by card effects or can negate card effects or do practically any kind of self-protection aside from not being allowed to be tributed, a la, uh, summoner monk, means that a kaiju is a perfect way to one for one get that crap off your opponent's board. Their effective removal that doesn't telegraph themselves at all, they're, um, really good. Granted, obviously, uh, Gamasil is the kaiju of choice for most people because it's got the lowest attack power, because you don't want to give your opponent uh, a kaiju to get over their boss monster and then just give them something that you yourself can't run over. It, it, you're trading one problem for another, but 2700 really isn't that big. Most of the crap in your extra deck can probably crash over this thing. How could this happen to me? And it's a level eight, so you might find that your opponent has a harder time using it for material for things like synchro summoning or whatever, because uh, their their level tens or higher's all require a level eight synchro monster to make or some hoo-ha. There, there's there is some benefit to this uh, kaiju over some of the other ones, and it's basically just a little bit less good than Gamasil for all of these reasons because that is also an eight. I suppose it does also have a kaiju effect. Uh, what does this the one do? I don't even remember. It's been so long. All right, you remove three kaiju counters as a quick effect to half the attack of all monsters in the field. That's terrible. You're not gonna ever use that anyway. <laughs> it's obviously meant to be used. Uh, and when it's when you're actually playing kaijus as like a deck, but for most people that who cares All right number five phantom knights fog blade. Yep. This thing is only rare. What is fog blade do continuous trap card activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the field negate that face up monsters effects that face up monster cannot attack and cannot be targeted for attacks when that monster leaves the field destroy this card so basically it's it's fiendish chain however it does have a second effect where you can banish this thing from your graveyard to special summon one phantom knight's monster from your graveyard so in a pure phantom knight deck it has lots of utility so, uh, even though you could technically just run this as a generic trap card uh, added utility for an actual phantom knight deck is that they can search the thing with their boss their dead link monster uh bardish oh my god it's been so long rusty right it's rusty right also uh my discord put a note here saying a better phoenix chain that adds the added versatility of targeting an unaffected boss monster and making them untargetable by a battle uh thanks for telling me what card you guys are talking about like you assume I know what any of this does. <laughs> I think what they're saying is if the monster's unaffected by card effects, you can target it to attempt to negate its effect, which it will not do, but the inability to be attacked by other monsters is uh, actually not an effect affecting the monster, it's just a condition on the board, so therefore your monster can't be attacked even though you were unable to negate its effects. I assume that's what you're doing with that. Let's see if I was right. <laughs> Oh, thank God, what I know. Number four, Peleozoic Dynamiscus. Normal trap card, target one face-up card on the field, discard one card, and if you do, banish the target. It's basically Karma Cut 
but um, it discards upon resolution, not for cost, which is actually kind of neat. It means that if you are playing Paleos or Paleo Frogs or Paleo Sprites, I guess, I... You don't know what you're talking about, do you? If your opponent negates the, the trap effect, uh, you don't have to worry about losing too much advantage because you don't have to pay cost before you do it because there is none. So that's neat. And as a paleo monster, if it is in the graveyard and another trap on the field is activated, you can summon this thing from the graveyard to the field as a level two aqua monster with 1200 attack, zero defense that is unaffected by monster effects. It is also no longer a trap card, which is kind of unique to paleos as they are trap monsters that don't stay traps. Kind of neat. And the fact that they are a level two aqua monster means you make toad. <laughs> But not just that, they're also unaffected by monster effects. So uh, sometimes that comes up, your opponent tries to throw a hand trap at these or something for some stupid reason. I, I don't know, I, I've had it happen and um, doesn't do anything. <laughs> even though it's a normal monster, so I don't know why they'd want to do that, but it's happened to me. The only thing you gotta watch out for is a when a trap card is activated, you can summon this thing from the graveyard, uh, which means that if your opponent uh, either activates something to your activation of a trap or activates two things and chain buries the trap, your paleo's mistiming. Big sad. But for a rare, super solid. Most of the paleos are actually pretty low rarity, so uh, if you need to bolster your deck with some decent trap cards, they're really not a bad option. All right, here we go. Uh, come on, Discord is slacking. They had the wrong compulse here. <laughs> They're both rares, which um, uh, is 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 cute, I suppose. But uh, I think they said compulsory evacuation device, but then the note said spin a body to the deck. They got them mixed up. Complete the connection. <laughs> Do it yourself! Compulsory Evacuation Device is a normal trap card where you target one monster on the field, return it to the hand. That's it. An oldie, but a goodie. I've seen relevance in real Yu-Gi-Oh um, for, you know, a million years here and there because it's every once in a while just a very good way of dealing with something that's otherwise uh, really obnoxious. Good against DP. It still targets, but it doesn't destroy, and sometimes that's really all that matters. If you wanted to talk about the other one, uh, Escape Device, I think it's called? Uh, we each return a monster to the deck, but we don't both need to succeed in doing it, so you can play it with Wind Up Rabbit for Big Cheese, <laughs> which is like, I think Wind Up Rabbit's like an altar in this game, what the hell? Or is it Thunderbird? I don't remember. Which one of them? One of them's too rare to play Chain Beat, and it's bullshit. Number two! Book of Moon! Yeah! I feel bad for all them Duel Links players. All your good cards are rares and normals. <laughs> Quick play spell card, target a monster in the field, put it in the face down defense position. That's it. A very, very simple effect, but the fact that it's tied to a quick play spell card means there is some cheese to be had. Monsters that are unaffected by, let's say, monster effects no longer protect themselves if they are face down in the dirt. Many good boss monsters don't have very much defense power, so sticking them face down is a great way to run over them. Or if your opponent's got, like, skill drain on board and you want to use one of your monster effects, you can chain Book of Moon to your own monster effect to put a face down and it will actually successfully resolve. Big funny. Book of Moon is weirdly versatile because it's a quick play spell and they're all kind of weirdly versatile. I really like me some Book of Moon and it's a really neat tech choice for things like flu. We got an honorable mention. No oh boy, I've never heard of this thing in my life. And its name is a jibber jabber of letters. Hress Flagger, the Desperate Doom Eagle. I'm so desperate. Please, somebody, <laughs> subscribe. You say that like it's a joke. Link three, Wind Wing Beast Monster. What do? Good f***ing question. 2400 attack, two plus wind monsters. Ooh, you can make it with less than three things. Hmm, neat. That's good Link climbing. Gains 2400 attack while your opponent has no monsters in the graveyard. That's that's actually kind of cute. I like that. 4800, that's a big number. That's not an activated effect right there. But it also does have a regular effect. Quick effect. You can target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, shuffle it into the deck. Ah, see that's neat. It's kind of a DD Crow, but like you gotta summon it first, so it's not quite as powerful, but that's still pretty neat. And it also makes its first effect kind of self-fulfilling, so you can work towards that attack boost if you must. And this is just one of those things where it's generic enough and its effect is versatile enough for it to be a pretty nice little addition to a good board. 
And we got a dishonorable mention. It's Fusion Destiny. F*** this card. I hate that stupid thing. Because it's like, it's hard to even be mad at DP because he's kind of fair. Because he doesn't, he blows himself up and your card. So it's not like your opponent's getting tons of value out of it, at least initially. But if you can't get the thing out of the graveyard, it keeps coming back. It's a pain in the butt. Um, this thing sends material to fusion summon from the deck so it's a foolish or it's a foolish burial uh, as a fusion summon that's already kind of bullshit but if you want a real reason why it's a dishonorable mention not just because i'm salty um it's a very 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 good rare but it summons an ultra rare so uh i don't know if it would actually count for the list anyway because you can't really use it except with higher or high rarity cards so well okay fine you could summon you could there's probably some bad targets for it but we, we know you're not using that Number one, Forbidden Chalice. Quick play spell card. Target one monster in the field. Until the end of the turn, it gains 400 attack, but its effects are negated. Poor man's droplets, here we go. Why are you pulling me? I'm right. For a rare, this is really decent value because Chalice has always been a really, really good card as a spell speed to spell card negating a monster effect is inherently useful and you can have things on your board so it has different utility uh, over things like uh, impermanence and it is technically searchable even though you'd have to be specific probably playing it like a, a very specific deck for that to be relevant but you, you could in theory search it so that's that's cute no no he's got a point but not only that, it does also raise attack power, which means you can use it during the damage step, which is, uh, which is can be cheesy. And you can even use it offensively, give your guy a little bit more power to get over something or maybe close out a game. There's some serious utility for this and it is nice to see that it is a rare card because we need to give the budget players some actual real cards, not just everything can be a super that's good because everyone would uh, needs to at least get to 40 cards, right? <laughs> at least give him something to play. And Forbidden Chalice is certainly not a bad option for a rare. Bring back the normal rare tournament. That was fun. All right, guys, that was the list. I hope you liked it. This series has been educational, I'll say. I don't think we're gonna do like worst normals and best ultras or anything like that because that would actually be very difficult. Plus I, I have some other lists I'm looking forward to doing that are uh, kind of on the back burner because I wanted to get through all of these. Uh, one in which is the worst summoning animations in, in Master Duels. I'm actually excited about this one. There's one specific card that's a very good card but it's got a very cringe animation. In the comments, uh, guess which one you think it is. And for those Discord people, you, you can't cheat because you, you know what I've said. All right, guys, remember, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time.